Hey guys, it's Christina of Crafty Paws. I'm here to share a process video on how I made this sweet springtime anniversary card. This is a entry for Jay Colby's Ghosts of Crafts Pass Challenge. It's kind of a tongue twister. <laughs> I have had this super cute Mama Elephant stamp set for a while now. I bought it in a D stash and Easter after Easter has gone by and I have not had a chance to use it. So I was really excited to get a chance to use these cute little bunnies in an anniversary card. And this is also a design team project for Diamond Dies. I got to use the brand new cross-stitched circled nesting die set. I used the third from the largest. And I think that that cross-stitching is such a wonderful addition to really kind of prim or cutesy cards. They add a kind of homespun kind of feeling to them. And I die cut that circle out of watercolor paper. I also use the, ch the Cherry Blossoms Branch and Flowers die set and made this beautiful branch under which the little bunnies are sitting and gazing out together. I want to remind you guys that Diamond Dies is currently having an awesome sale. By using the coupon code SAVE15, you can get 15% off and free worldwide shipping with no minimum purchase. That's an awesome deal. If you happen to be watching this video afterwards, use the coupon code THANKSCHRISTINA with a K and you'll get 10% off plus free worldwide shipping on all orders of $35 or more. And the whole thing was inspired by this wonderful quote. It's one of my favorites. It says, love does not consist of gazing at each other, but in looking outward together in the same direction. And that quote is by Antoine de saint de Superi. I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly, but it's as close as you're going to get from me. <laughs> anyway, it was a quote that we had in our wedding program. And since so the last anniversary card that I shared with you guys earlier this week, my hubby reminded me that it's also my in-laws wedding anniversary coming up. So I thought I would make this little card for them. I hope you all enjoy this process video. So you'll see I've already colored in these cute little bunnies. I used Tim Holtz Distress Markers and a Pento water brush. If you want to know about the specific colors I use, please check out my blog post that I will link to below in the description box. I'm just cutting these little bunnies out. I had stamped them out with MFT Hybrid Dye Ink in Black Licorice and that works great with watercolors as well as with Copic markers. Now I'm just fussy cutting them out with my Fiskars spring loaded scissors and I'm taking my time so that I get a clean cut even though this paper is a little bit thicker. You'll also see that I'm going to go back in into that little area between the two bunnies and use an X-Acto knife and cut that little tiny piece out because I want the background to show through all of that area. Now I'm holding the little cut image out with my left hand and using a Sharpie black marker to go around the edge of the paper because I didn't want the white edge of the paper to show and any kind of black marker will do but you have to be really quick about doing this process because watercolor paper is very absorbent so the ink will wick right into the image so if you're not quick about this it will seep into the inner part of the image and you don't want that. Now you'll see holding it in my left hand was critical because I did mess up. My pen went onto the back of that image. Now I'm going to just dot in that little space in the middle with that black pen and that will get the inside edge of that cutout space. Now I cut a partial circle out of watercolor paper. I didn't have a full sheet so <laughs> it's only a part of the circle but that's okay because that's going to come right up to the edge of the card front. I'm taking a blending tool and using really light circular strokes or motions with that blending tool and tumbled glass distress ink. And I like the soft blue, but I think I decided I wanted it a little bit darker right around the edges because I wanted the cross stitching to show up better and having a darker color really brings that into relief. So I use Salty Ocean just around the outside edge. For the lower part of this background circle, I'm using Mowed Lawn. 
and that gives a really nice fresh green new grass kind of look. To maintain the consistency and texture and thickness with the bunnies and the background, I cut this cherry blossom branch out of watercolor paper. So now I'm adding Tim Holtz Distress Ink in Gathered Twigs to add a brown color. And if you'll notice, I'm actually going from the underside of the branch toward the top of the branch so that you get a darker shading on the lower part of the branch because that would be the darker part if the sun was shining from above. Now, I think that that is generally good enough, but because the edges of the bunnies is so dark, I decide I'm gonna add an extra color. And so I go over this branch again with walnut stain, which is a darker brown. And again, I'm going from the underside to the upper part of the branch so that you get that shadowing effect underneath. To kind of beef up this branch, I decide I'm gonna offset a second branch that I cut out of black cardstock. I'm just trimming off a little piece of it because I wanted the tree branch to all be kind of upwardly turned <laughs> so that the bunnies would have a nice space underneath. So I had done that to the other piece as well. And now I'm just using art glitter wet glue and putting that on the back of the branch that was cut out of the watercolor paper and inked up. And now I'm going to place that so that the watercolor version is just offset, just above the black cardstock version, and that creates a really nice clean shadow underneath each branch. I die cut out a whole bunch of those little cherry blossoms, and I'm coloring them up with some distressed ink in spun sugar, just to give them a pale pink kind of hue. And I did that intentionally because I didn't want a flat cardstock color. I wanted the, you know, variance in color that you get from ink blending. Now to get some dimension onto these little flowers, I'm flipping them over and using the embossing tool. It's a separate stylus attachment or accessory pack that you can get for your Spellbinder tool-in-one. So I flip over each flower and I'm using the stylus to push down on each petal of the flower on the back side, then flip the flower over and push just in the middle. And now I'm taking this really cute pastel colored, iridescent colored little rhinestone gems from Recollections, and they have itty bitty teeny tiny gems, perfect for the size of these little flowers. So I use the slightly larger ones for the centers of the larger cherry blossoms, and I use the teeny teeny tiny ones for the smallest flowers. I will say these gems are so tiny that they're hard to handle. So I'm using the stylus actually as a kind of pickup tool as well. So I cut a card front from white cardstock and I cut it a little bit less wide than the card base so that you could see a little bit of the card craft cardstock exposed on the side. And then I die cut out the same circle and I inset that the inked up background for the bunnies. Now you see a ton of double-sided foam adhesive on the back of all of that because I wanted that whole piece popped up from the card base. Now I'm gonna glue on with my favorite art glitter glue with the fine tip nozzle, the branch just above where I've positioned the bunnies. They haven't been glued down yet. Now I'm flipping the card over and just cutting off the overhanging branch piece. And I decide I'm gonna pop up the little bunnies. So I'm using more foam adhesive and I'm putting that on each of the little bunny ears, the little arms, anything that sticks out because I wanna make sure that these little bunnies are firmly adhered in place.
Now don't those little bunnies look so sweet sitting there in their little grassy area? Now for gluing on all of those little blossoms that I've prepared in advance. Sometimes the little gems fell off, but it was easy to put them right back on. Now while I'm gluing these flowers on, I want to make sure not to flatten them out. Even though I want them to be securely on the branches, I don't want to lose all the dimension that I spent all that time making with the embossing tool. So I'm, I'm being careful to adhere and hold firm, but not squish. Also, I'm trying to take care to attach the smaller flowers toward the ends of the branches and the slightly larger ones kind of further down lower in the branches because I think that that's probably a more natural way for the flowers to bloom. When I printed out that quote from my computer, I also added a stitched border all around the outside of this five by seven piece of cardstock. And I think that that adds a really nice additional feature and it was super easy to do. To decorate further the inside of the card, I had five extra little blossoms made and I'm attaching them three to the lower left corner and two to the upper right above the quote. I like adding things like this in odd numbers. I think it's more pleasing to the eye. And that's my finished card. I hope you enjoyed this process video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great crafty day.